All right, so everyone wants to get good at Call of Duty, and we're either limited time or we got too much time and we don't know what to do with it. I would say in a perfect world, everyone can play Call of Duty for five to six hours a day, but really, I think you only need three hours a day to get really good at Call of Duty and just overall build your skills. So the first thing I want to talk uh, start with is our routine, right? Um, Basically, one of the most important things about Call of Duty is your warm up. Your warm up is what's going to help you just get ready for the day and, of course, get the blood flowing through your fingers. But not only that, but get the blood flowing through your brain. So, how do we act actively do a warm up? I would say 30 minutes a day you should warm up and focus on training your mechanics, training your awareness. And then if you actually, you know, want to get with some team members, you could also practice, you know, setups, breaks, rotations, but we'll talk about that later. So let's talk about for the first 30 minutes, we want to work on a mechanic. The most important thing you need to do when working on a mechanic is know which mechanic you're going to work on, right? Which one mechanic are you going to work on for the next 15 to 30 minutes? So that mechanic could be movement, jumping, sliding. It could also be jump shotting. It could be practicing centering. It could be anything. It's just important to choose one and choose your you know, weakest point. So I'd like to ask you, um, Rainfield, what would you say is your weakest point uh, when it comes to Call of Duty, like mechanic wise? Uh, snaking when I'm under pressure. Snaking when you're under pressure. I love hearing that. Okay, so basically for the next 15 minutes, then we would practice snaking and just uh, snaking under pressure. So ideally, you'd want to go middle map. And now that I'm sitting middle map, I have to worry about all these spots behind me to my right. And look at that. I, I died, <laughs> um, which is not the plan, of course. I see a guy over here, so maybe I can go and snake around this corner. Okay, that was a pretty ugly snake. I'm probably gonna wanna do that better. But literally what I'm showing you right now is snaking even mid gunfight and sneaking when it doesn't make sense. Because if you're sneaking when it doesn't make sense right now and you're just constantly doing it and just building that muscle memory on your thumbs, you're gonna be able to just remember it mid game and do it without you know feeling nervous. So like right here I'm doing it and like I didn't need to do it right there at all. I just had to shoot that guy, kill him. But instead I'm snaking. All right, let's try to get to a, a middle point again. Actually, probably top bar would be good. This is a spot that everyone goes as a submachine gun. And that's another thing I'm doing is I'm choosing maps that you feel uncomfortable on. So I know a lot of people feel uncomfortable on Himmel at Expo, specifically submachine gun players. So like we can also go to the spots where we practice kills, right? So like right here, uh, this is my this might be a spot where people are um, spawn trapping. And you can practice the snaking right here for the spawn trap. Just like that. And then, of course, we could also, you know, go over here and practice the middle bar cut, uh, which ARs and some, uh, some machine gun players practice, of course. And that's the whole thing I'm just trying to get across, is for the next 15, 30 minutes, this is the only mechanic you're doing. It's your snaking the entire time. Every gunfight when it doesn't make sense. And you're also going to the spots where you need to practice gunfights. Like right there, I choked under pressure. Why did I choke under pressure while snaking trying to kill that guy? I need to work on that, right? Um, so that's definitely what you want to do when working and building your mechanics, whether that's jump shotting, snaking, or maybe even 360ing enemies so you can have a faster reaction time. Now, I want to take it to the next level and also include things that we can practice, such as let's say we want to practice um, psyllium snaking, right? Like we have we're a little confused on how to snake. So we pull up, you know, an old CDL match and we look for these pro players and we start looking for them to snake. So there we go. We got slasher snaking a little bit. We got simp snaking on these back stairs. I really want to see psyllium because psyllium is, of course, going to be snaking. All right, so we, we got at least one good example, and that's this example right here. Where right now, as I'm watching this pro player gameplay, I see him snaking behind this crate, and I'm seeing him do it in a specific pattern, right? 
And the pattern that I'm trying to talk about is he's like snaking quite a bit and he's allowing himself to basically barely be seeing. So like snake, snake, snake. He can barely see above snake, snake. And then when he's ready for a gunfight, he comes up ready to shoot. And then he starts uh, doing stutter aiming. So I'm like, okay, cool. I want to mimic that. So I hop in the game real quick. I look to get behind cover. Probably just go out in the middle again. And like right here, I can start practicing my snaking, right? Snake, 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 snake. And then now I'm ready for the kill. Boom. Stand up. And right there, one thing I messed up on was I didn't stutter aim. I could have stuttered aimed right there to, um, you know, better hit my shot. So let's practice it again. Snake, 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 snake. Go for the kill. Boom. Stutter aimed. I got the kill. And that is practicing all the mechanics. You would want to do that 15, 30 minutes when you first hop on. Now, let's talk about another warm up you can do, and that's for your awareness, right? How do we actually get those brain juices flowing? So, of course, you can get the brain juices flowing by doing this, but one of my favorite ways to get the brain, uh, brain juices flowing is two ways. You can try to play a game or run a puzzle that gets your brain flowing, right? You can do a crossword puzzle. You could do, you know, chess. You could play whatever it is, and that's a part of your warm-up. And the whole point of it is you're bringing something from your real life that you probably enjoy, and you're bringing it in into Call of Duty. And if you just start thinking about chess, I'll tell you right now, playing chess was the greatest thing I did because it started making me just think, you know, five, eight steps ahead where I'm like, okay, because I push up on the right, the enemy's going to know I'm here. So I'm going to rotate back left, but then I'm going to throw my nades back right to guarantee and trick them that I'm going towards the right. And da -da 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 -da. <laughs> it just, get, it, it just, it's fun, right? It's just fun to kind of mesh the two worlds together. Um, and it's also, you know, a good, you know, brain teaser to get you warmed up. Um, another brain teaser that I really enjoy is choosing randomly in a CDL match and just trying to expect what's the next thing that's gonna happen. So what I mean by that is I'm going to just randomly click somewhere, boom, okay, we are playing SND on El Asilo and it looks like, oops, sorry, we're playing Control on El Asilo and it looks like Boston is in a spawn trap. Okay, let me predict how Boston is gonna get it out of the spawn trap. Okay, I'm gonna say that three and one are gonna work to kill six. Number four and one are they gonna work their top together and look for eight to go for the pinch, and then they're gonna try to go for a B play. So I, I just thought a few steps ahead, right? That's literally it. These two guys are gonna work together, kill them, then these guys are gonna go up here, and then this guy is probably gonna flank them and kill them. But if this guy, if blue guy dies, then this team is gonna be able to go and play B. Right, so that's what I'm expecting to hap uh, expecting to happen. Let's see if I'm right. Okay, three and one are working together. Actually, four one are working together to kill that guy. So four and one kill that guy. Four and one are pushing up together. And this is where I said, okay, yeah, they're gonna play for B. And then eventually number eight is probably gonna go for a pinch. Maybe not. Okay, maybe not. Uh, but like that's my whole point is at least by looking at that map, I can already start thinking that based on these positions, oh, Boston, the next play they're going to do is go B, right? And that's all it is. It's just choosing a random place. Boom. Click random place. Oh, actually, they restarted this one. So let me click random place. Okay. We're on Mercado. Essen, uh, I mean, Mercado hard point. There's 10 seconds left. We're looking like we're going to get rotated for P5, it looks like or maybe P3, okay, cool, yeah, we're rotating for P3, and off the bat, the first thing I can see is this guy is just going for a cut, these guys are just focusing their front, this is actually a really solid setup by Boston, um, what's gonna happen is these two guys are probably just gonna ignore number three, get to the back, start fighting first, number five is gonna fly in, get the kill, and FaZe is going to basically kill all the enemies and win the game right here. Uh, okay, let's see if they ignore number three, cool, so it didn't happen, right? What's happening instead is phase. They're waiting until they're all three getting right here. And all right, looks like they're just getting ready to just go for a four man hit and just kind of push through. But it's kind of, they're doing the same thing, right? Where dang, number five actually flies for that kill. 
All right. <laughs> All right. So I was just kind of getting lost in the sauce just by watching the game right there. Um, but like this is one thing you can do to get those brain juices flowing. You could also practice spawns by the uh, by doing this as well. We're right here. I can just randomly click in a spot. OK, so right now Slasher and Ibizi died. Where are they going to spawn? OK, so we have eight and six over here, four over here. Um, based on this, Slasher and Ibizi are more than likely going to squad spawn at number eight with Celium. But if they don't squad spawn, then they're going to spawn out over here at P1. Let's see what happens. OK, cool. So they got the squad spawn middle. Um, so they got a squad spawn middle. It wasn't exactly right there. Again, this is old. Uh, this is old patch. So it's probably way better doing this on new patch. But let's do it again. Just click over here. No one's dead. Let's click somewhere else. No one's dead. Let's click somewhere else. Click somewhere else. OK, so right here we see that Abizi and Snoopy are dead. So Abizi and Snoopy. Abizi's for sure going to spawn with his teammates just because that's a squad spawn. And then um, Snoopy is going to probably spawn over here at Yellow Van. So let's press play. Boom, Snoopy spawns at Yellow Van. And then Abizi um, gets a weird spawn middle. <laughs> and he gets shot from behind at, uh, from Abizi. Which again, this is the old spawns, but you could bring up other games from like live streams and learn spawns that way. And once again, this is just a good way to get your brain flowing for the warm up. All right, any questions? Yeah, what was that chess app you were playing? Is there like an app or a game I can get? Chess.com? Yeah, it's just chess.com. It's on Google. It's on, I think you could download it as an app. <laughs> Hopefully it will. Okay, we'll give it a go. Awesome, awesome. All right, so that is how we will warm up. But now let's talk about while we're waiting for the next game, right? So the game just ends, and we can take the time right now to go take a break real quick, go use the restroom, come back, get prepared for the next match. But a lot of the times we're kind of just like waiting and chilling. And I want to let you guys know, you have a superpower. During this time, you don't have to wait or chill. You can literally pull up tack maps right now and just start creating a game plan for like the next SD that you're going to play. Okay, we're playing El Asilo. Um, just from that last match we played, I know that these guys like to rush up middle quite a bit and they kind of just always focus A, they always ignore B. So because they ignore B, um, I want to have my team do a 2-2 uh, flank where two people are gonna go B and flank, two people are gonna to go towards courtyard and flank. So we have an AR up here pre-aiming our sub, the sub player goes up for a pinch, we have an AR player pre-aiming over a sub, sub player pushes up, and then these sub players work together to kill both of these enemies from behind. And once we kill this enemy, we now have a four-man uh, pinch from all four sides. Done, right? And boom, we're now back into the next game. Yo guys, I just created a strap uh, strat for El Asilo. And not only that, but I recorded this. I can quickly clip this, send it to you guys, or I could, uh, you know, go back to tack maps and send that over to our teams, uh, teammates as well, right? Where, let's say before we're loading into the game and we are playing ranked play, I say, yo, sub players do this, or sorry, actually. So while we're loading into a gameplay, I'll be like, all right, yo, sub players are going around and pinching and they're pushing up like this, and they're working it together, and then AR players, I just want you guys to pre-aim over them while we do this. Done. And then you can screenshot this, send it over to your teammates, and play it, uh, play it out. Or you can share your screen on Discord and show people how to play it, just how I did right now as well. Um, cool. So let's say that uh, creating strats really isn't your cup of tea guess what you still have the superpower while you're loading into the next game you can re-watch the last game you just played so in this game right here let's say i just got done playing this game we're getting back into the loading screen i can quickly pull up my live stream or pull up my recording and immediately just watch and figure out how the hell did we lose okay i see this we have three dead we have a teammate holding uh the spawners I'm over here to give him a cross, and I have a teammate hard blocking spawns. Okay, good. Maybe one enemy spawns behind us. Good. Teammate has that cut. 
all right we're watching cool our teammates spawned right next to us we're good we just need to literally lay down play kills everything's fine is there anything i need to do two dead my teammate still has flank and oh all right boom First thing I need to fix right here. Next time, pay attention to my minimap. Understand I have a teammate watching that. I also have a second teammate basically holding my middle. Therefore, there's no reason for me to be watching this. I can simply just sit right here on hill, hill and watch over here. Or I can sit where I'm watching and keep watching over here on my left. And once my teammate dies over here, then I can turn and look over here. Okay, so that's a fix I need to do next time is pay attention to my minimap more and just trust my teammates. Trust my teammates. Because right there, I died. All right. Maybe there's another change. Uh, maybe there's another fix. Uh, nope. Okay. Boom. Just like that, we're loading into the next game, and I have a tip I can work on. Right? Hold my uh, pre-aim, trust my teammates, and just play off of the minimap. And that's just actively using our time management in between matches and scrims and creating strats or rewatching our own gameplay just so we can get better. And this is going to just literally keep you focused on Call of Duty for the next three hours or however long you play. And it's important to practice this way. Now, the last thing I would say is, you know, maybe we warmed up for 30 minutes. We played for two to three hours. And while we were playing, we were VOD reviewing and creating strats mid game. And the last 30 minutes of your day, I will always say this, the last 30 minutes of your day, the best thing you can ever do is rewatch your gameplay. Just because if you rewatch your own gameplay for 30 minutes and you figure out the things that you messed up on, that's going to make you a extremely better player. And um, you're gonna just be dreaming about Call of Duty, which if you're dreaming about Call of Duty, now you're doing work while you're sleeping. <laughs> um, you're going to get better just by sleeping, which is always, you know, a nice benefit. All right. Any questions? No, no, it's good. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now, the last thing I just want to talk about is understanding that we just went over a bunch of examples on how to get better in game, how to have a routine for in game. But I want to take this to the next level and talk to the people that actually have goals set for themselves, whether that be reach iridescent, be a pro player, be a streamer, what have you. And it's all about understanding what is our definition of hard work. To you, what does hard work mean to you? I want you to write that down and then I want you to stick to it. Okay. Right. And uh, it could be anything because being hard work, could be something simple and small, such as, okay, do exactly what Elias told me today. That is hard work. And if that's what you think is hard work is, beautiful, run with it. 100% run with it until your standards um, just grow, right? Because eventually we're gonna grow and find new standards. Um, and hard work can literally be anything. So like, I, I'd like to ask you, um, Jason, what what's hard work to you when it comes to like Call of Duty? Okay, or like, can you think of just like maybe one thing? Uh, what's what I find hard? Uh, hard work. The easy stuff is is running around getting kills. <laughs> oh yeah. That's just too easy because I'm I'm unfortunately I'm an adrenaline junkie, so I, I just feed off it. Uh, the hardest work, what I would consider hard work, I, uh, what I would consider hard work is learning my positioning and okay. learning spawns. Spawns, even, oh my God, I've got the basic of it, but even to this day, I'm just like, oh my God. And then, um, yeah, I, I mean, you've taken me over it. It's starting to get better and better. I'm watching like pro players and my my wife will be my missus will be sat with me sometimes i'm like right they're going to be spawning over there and this will be happening yeah that's hard work it's doing the things i'm go. not comfortable with that's hard work yeah because physically because hard work doing lots of work is not hard for me i'm naturally a, uh, a real hard worker naturally it's just who i am um so i've got that benefit but yeah hard work is gonna be just getting more tactical with the game and improving like my spawn knowledge 
right in spawns fucking spawns that's hard work um but more um uh more to the point just getting better at knowing where people are gonna be and just not getting caught out all the time right yeah, yeah. The, the hardest thing for me is to get away from is to get away from being a headless chicken because <laughs> I'm, I'm hunting i'm hunting the adrenaline rush that's what i'm doing while i'm playing the game and it's, it's killing me because I'm, I'm like a basically a, 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 i love adrenaline i've done some crazy stuff and the buzz of it I just, just yeah no yeah i think every call of duty player is like that because i'll tell you right now some call of duty players they are just bored of vod review they just don't do it it's too boring and that's hard work for them just showing up is hard work for some people you may have an actual coach and analyst doing all of the analyzing and vod review uh but it's hard work for a person just to show up to that you know it's it's again the definition's different for everyone i'm glad you have that as your definition and working on spawns like i said after your match of a game, you can quickly throw up that game that you just watched and quickly just click anywhere and just be like, okay, damn, we just killed all four enemies right here. Let me look at my mini map. Oh, 10 seconds left of P5. Okay, because my teammate over here is pushed up right now, maybe one or two of these enemies are spawning back here, but for a fact, two of these enemies are spawning behind me. And I know that these enemies are gonna try to push up and kill me from behind. All right, let's press play and let me see if I'm right. Okay, I'm walking back over here looking for a kill because I know that they're going to spawn back here. Boom, I was correct, but I still lose the gunfight. Holy crap, that's insane. All right, let's skip somewhere else, but let's like maybe do a different game, right? Um, or actually, no, let's keep doing this one. So it's P3, 20 seconds left. Oh, damn, all three of my teammates died, but one of the enemies died. Thankfully, my teammate is over here on the left. That means all of my teammates are going to spawn right here, which means all the enemies are going to be in front of me and they're going to be pushing out in front if they are going to hit it. So press play, boom, all my teammates spawn right there and we're rotating anyways. Okay, uh, skip to another part. All right, I just killed Beans and my teammate Tryhard just died. Look at the map. All right, for sure, my teammate Tryhard is going to ideally spawn right here or spawn with my teammates and Beans is either going to be spawning out, well, actually Beans will just no matter what be spawning out over at P1 gate. So I know that he's over there. Press play. And boom, okay, wow, that's a change. My teammate, my teammate, Loyalty Tryhard, spawned at P1 gate, so that means Beans is 100% spawned behind me, and that means he could be either going up top, he could either hit out back, or go back door. So right now, I should be looking for that kill on Beans. Am I going for the kill? I am. Let's see if I kill Beans. Boom. Or, well, I didn't kill Beans because Beans is up here and he just killed our teammate, but I did kill an enemy and, like, that's what I'm looking for, right? Um, so, you could do that for your own gameplay. And I just want to let everyone else know that, like, again, the definition of hard work is different every time. Where there will be a point where you feel like you are just as good as possible on Call of Duty, but you want to get really good at performing and endurance so you start you know always doing a workout and you always do a meditation and you always play chess before playing call of duty because that sets you to be balanced and ready to just dominate and focus only on call of duty right um and there's other routines as well where maybe after you you get done playing call of duty you spend your time actually focusing on relaxing and forgetting about call of duty and the way you forget about Call of Duty is no matter what, after you're done with your session, you always go outside and you go for a walk just so you can focus on nature and then just, you know, ground yourself. And like that within itself is hard work for like a pro Call of Duty player. Because maybe a pro Call of Duty player much rather play 10 hours a day rather than go out for a walk and work out before playing and then going for a walk after playing. Right, like that's their definition of hard work, um, and I'm I'm mostly talking about myself. I'm not speaking for any other pros. I'm talking about for myself. Where <laughs> there's a point where I can play for ten hours straight, and that's all I want to do. But the hard work is getting off and making sure I take care of my health. Because if you take care of your health and you focus on yourself first, you're going to be even twenty times better as a player. Yep. Coach, manager, yeah. Uh, but 
that concludes the class. Any other questions? No, no, that's given me some stuff to work on. Appreciate it. Excellent. Definitely. Yeah, no problem. I sent over notes. Um, the notes will be in the bottom of the video as well once I upload it. But yeah, if you have any other questions, just let me know, and I'm always happy to help, all right? Yeah, no, I mean, it means a lot. Thank you. Yeah, no, I appreciate these classes, and 